But see, if, if we get this idea that our circumstances somehow make that right, <laughs> then we're messed up in our logic as far as our, our philosophy of, of Christianity and understanding of biblical truth. Because even if I pray for you to be healed in a surgery, and, and instead of being healed, you lose your life, God is still good. God has not stopped being good because you failed the test. <laughs> That's a good thing. Amen? You know what I'm saying? God is, God is still good. But we've created this, this, this crazy theology in our day, man, and all you got to do is turn the TV on. There are preachers who will teach you fallacy in the name of gospel. And they will try to tell you that if, as long as you're faithful and you serve God, that God will buy you a car, God will give you a big house, and God will give you a great job, and everything you ask for, if you have faith enough, you're going to get it. That is heresy. That is heresy. God's goodness is not determined by how much money's in your bank account. God's goodness is not determined by how much food I have on my table at supper time. Is it good when we're at the buffet? Hallelujah, right? Yes. <laughs> Amen. I'm with you. Celebration time. Yes. But if I didn't have food for weeks and I was starving, it would take a while. Amen. I mean, it would a long time, for months, you know. But if I didn't have food for an extended period of time, God would deserve my praise. Listen, God would deserve my worship just as much when my stomach was empty as he deserves it when my stomach is full. Now, we may have, we may have people in our lives. Listen, this is so important, man. We may have people in our lives that we look to and we say, you know what, I, I, I have a rock and knowing that they are the person I depend on. They're, they're my, they're my, my faith really in a lot of ways is founded on what they've taught me. I, I depend on them, I love them. And, and here's the deal, sometimes we can be so guilty of saying, God, you're good because I see your goodness in them. What happens when you don't see your, his goodness in them? What happens when the people that you think will never fail you, fail you? And it's easy if you tied God so much to them that their goodness equals God's goodness. Listen, when people let you down, God is still good. When a church lets you down, God is still good. When a preacher makes a mistake, God is still good. Do not turn away from the church of Jesus Christ because a man or a woman has made a terrible mistake and has let you down or has let God down. God, God's goodness, God's faithfulness to you does not depend on your approval of the circumstances. He's good. It is who he is. It's not just what he does. He is good. God is good. God is good. In the sunshine, he is good. In the rain, he is good. In healing, he is good. In pain, he is good. God is good. It's who he is. There are some things we will never understand, but this we must rest our entire faith on. He is good. He's good. Final thing. Faith requires that we must trust God when we come to the end of our reason. reason. And so this is, again, such a simple thing, but it, it follows. If he is always good, that's what we rest in. We don't rest in our circumstances. The center of our logic is not resting on how how much stuff we get, how good God is to us in the sense of our provisions. But our center, the center of our spiritual logic is that God's character is, he is good. God's character is, he is right. He is always right. And so if God has done something, then my understanding, your understanding of what's going on in your life, it can't be shaken in your faith in God because your faith in God is not in the circumstances. Your faith in God is in his character. And God can be trusted. God can be trusted. And faith requires that we trust God. Even when we come to the end of reason. Even when we say this is unreasonable, God. This doesn't make sense, God. I'm confused, God. I'm angry. I'm angry, God. I don't want this to happen. This is not the way I wrote my story. 
This is not the way that I thought that man or that woman was going to end. How has this happened? How have I been mistreated? How have I been handed this mess? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some of it, right? Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your paths. He will make your path straight. So when everything else is crazy, man, when you're surrounded by darkness and despair, we've got to fix our eyes on Him. We need Him. We need Him. Middle school, high school, boy or girl, man, you need Him. You may not feel like you need Him. You may not think you need Him. You need Him. You need Him. Mom and Dad, you may think you've got it all together. I promise you, there's going to be a part of your journey pretty soon. It's going to be, it's going to be terrible. There's going to be a day, you may say, well, this is not very encouraging, Wayne, you know? There's going to be a day you wake up, and you don't know what happened, man. But life just got turned upside down on its head. I thought, I thought my family was this, and it's this. I thought I was a good dad or mom, and, and look, what, look what just happened. I thought my kids loved me. I thought my parents loved me, but look. I don't understand that. I thought my job was forever. Look. I thought I was going to make this. I thought I was going to have this. But look, you see, life is going to throw you curveballs. And you have to understand that your happiness, your joy, your your victory. (laughs) Look, if if we're trying to have an undefeated life based on our circumstances, you are going to live defeated for the rest of your life. Rest of your life. But if your victory, right, if your victory doesn't rest in your circumstances, but it rests in the hands of God, the creator of the universe, the one who saved your soul, right? If that's whose hands your victory rests in, then you, my friend, will live an undefeated life, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what craziness and chaos is going on around you. Just look at Romans 8 again real quick. we got to go. Romans 8, 35. Here's what it says. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. I didn't get to preach last Sunday. Did y'all know that? (laughs) Romans 8, 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Man, that's a good question. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble? Listen to all these bad things, all right? These are bad things. Everybody would vote. These are bad things. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, or danger? Sword? Are those things, are those bad things going to separate us from the love of God? That's a good question in a series called Questions. As it is written... For your sakes, we face death all day long. This is Paul speaking to God. He says, look, for your sake, we're, we're going to face death all day long. For, even for the sake of the church, we're going to face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. This is not good stuff. This is not fairy tales. This is not happily ever after. This is not everything's peachy. All right? This is bad stuff. Then the next verse is our theme verse. Now, no, he says, no, in all these things, things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us in what things in all the bad things that were listed up in verse 35 in the midst of trouble in the midst of hardship in the midst of persecution in the midst of famine in the midst of nakedness in the midst of danger in the midst of sword we're more than conquerors but then i want you to see this so the circumstances of our victory is in the middle of junk it's in the middle of trouble It's in the middle of pain. It's in the middle of suffering. We can make much of Jesus who delivers us from defeat if we lift our arms and we worship him in the midst of pain, right? So it's in all these things. But then I want to give you NASB's version of verse 37 because sometimes uh, NASB is definitely a more literal translation anyway, but sometimes it's good to read from another translation. Look at verse 37 again. The NASB, it should be on the screen, says, but in all these things... We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loves us. You may say, well, what's the difference there? It's so significant because here's the deal. The point of the passage is not me. The point of the passage is not you. And when we make us the point of the passage, we will live in defeat. If you are the point of your life, you will never be undefeated. If you are the reason you're living, you will never be happy. There will never be a day where you just check it off and say, I'm good, man. Awesome, I finally arrived. No, people who have it all realize they have nothing. And so at the end of the day, if if you're reaching for you, you're not going to ever find it. So, So what we have to do is recognize the center of this passage. In all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer. So this, the idea is like what we're doing. The action 
we overwhelmingly conquer. How do we do that? I just don't, right in the passage. Through him. Through him. So what's the center of the passage? What's the point? What's the point? Jesus. Jesus. You remember what Bill Purvis said last week? The answer, how did he say it? Uh, Y'all help me out. Everything you're looking for, that's it. Everything you're looking for can be found in Jesus. You remember that? Everything you're looking for can be found in Jesus. Man, if you try to be happy by attaining this, by earning this, by achieving this, promise. Listen, personal experience, you'll be a failure the rest of your life. In your own opinion, you won't even have to take a vote. You will be a failure the rest of your life. If your circumstances are defining how good God is to you, I can save you some time. You're never going to be happy with God. Because your circumstances are not always going to be great. They're going to be difficult days, man. They're going to be challenging games that are played in an undefeated season. There are going to be days where you face challenges. There are going to be injuries. There are going to be key players. Listen, there are going to be key players that get taken out of the game. One of the most difficult things, I'm telling you, in our lives is to recognize that, man, sometimes when we put people in a position that God alone deserves, he will remove them from that position. At the end of the day, we do not need anyone else. We do not need anything else. We need Jesus.